Hello and welcome to an Impact Gamers training video. This is the most basic of all the videos where I'll be showing you how to start up Click Team Fusion and create your own basic game from scratch. Things I'll be covering, starting an application, inserting objects, changing object properties, and most importantly, the property window. Looking at how you change the player controls, how you name and edit your objects, how you add conditions and events to your game, and finally, looking at adding scores and lives. Okay, here's a quick introduction to the Impact Gamers training videos. At the top of the screen is a magnified view of wherever the mouse pointer is positioned. And the mouse is surrounded by a yellow circle, so you can follow it. And also a red circle is added every time I left click double red circle for double click and a blue circle for every time I right click. Also, if any special keys are pressed on the keyboard, this is what I use so you can see the mouse more clearly in the videos. Also, if any special keys are pressed on the keyboard, they appear in orange in the top right. With common pitfalls, I'll put a red triangle on the screen referencing how you can fix it. So once downloaded Click Team Fusion 2.5 free edition, just start it up and you're presented with this screen. To start a new application, which is going to be your game, just click on File and New. Then you're in the Storyboard Editor. You must select the frame, which is your level, before you can select this icon, the Frame Editor, to get to actually editing your level or your frame. To insert anything, there's lots of different ways, but click Insert a New Object. If you select Active Object, that's an object that will move or interact with other objects. If you can't see all your objects, just make sure that you've cleared this search bar. Click, click to drop your object down. And then in the properties window over here, click on the running man to select the movement properties. On the type of movement, we're going to change that to eight directions, which is up, down, left and right and diagonals. We can try it out. So click on run and then application. We can just press F8 and then you get this window where you can test it out. So pressing left, right, up, down, and then you can combine them for diagonals um, moves your character around. You can change the settings in the properties window. The properties window is where all of the subtle changes happen. So we can change the speed to be something as much as 250, but I'll set it to 150 and the deceleration, how long it takes before it stops. And the acceleration, how long it takes before it gets to its top speed. So if we run the application again, it's going to be slower to slow down and it's just whizzed right off the screen. But press the other direction, it comes back. We have to close down that preview window when you're running the application in order to make changes. I'm going to insert a new object, another active object. I'm going to change it to eight directions. And this time I'm going to change it to player two. Now, player one and two have the same controls. So if I run the application, they will move about at the same time I press. If I want to change the controls, they're in the properties window of the application itself. So if I select the application and go to this little red play button called runtime options, and right at the bottom, there's default controls. If I edit that, I can click on the X on player two and it will give me an option to reset some keys. So I'm going to just do W, S, A and D. And I'll leave it there for the moment, but I could change the fire buttons as well. If I run the application to try it again, it means I can use up, down, left, right to control one and I can use W, A, S, D to control the other. Remember to close that window. 
in order to get full control of your editor. Now, those names aren't great, so I'm going to change the properties, the about properties. I'm going to change this one to be called player one, so I don't forget because the icons look the same, and this one to be player two. Now, if you want to change the way that the player looks or the character looks, you can double click on it and you can enter this little paint program. Um, it's not amazing, but it is the basics. And so I'm just going to clear it and just draw sort of a purple circle. Some eyes. Add some pupils. And add a mouth in as well. And make sure you press OK. Do not press X. You need to press OK. And now at this point, if I go to the event editor, this is the third editor I'm using, um, I can add in a new condition. This event editor is where we add all of the rules into the game, all the ifs, if something happens. So I click on new condition. I click on the active object player one, and I'm going to test its position. I'm, under its position, I'm going to test the position, and I'm going to click on all of these arrows that are pointing outside of the white screen to say if it tries to go out of that play area. So I clicked all four. So this condition goes along the row of the table. Now, under the event of what happens to which object, I choose the right column of what object I want to affect. Now, always right click for a tick. Um, I selected movement and then stop. So now, if I try and leave the play area, if the character tries to leave the play area, it stops. All of these conditions, all of these ifs, they all, all have a line to themselves. You can add multiple ticks on them, but they all have a line to themselves. So I create a new condition, a new line on the grid, new row, position, test position, select all those arrows inside. And then I'm going to right click for a tick underneath the object that I want. Movement. Wrap around, I'll choose. So now if I move the diamond, it wraps around, that's the rule, but the other player will just hit his head. Now you can see what rules are there just by hovering over. Do be careful that on the grid that you do put your ticks underneath the objects that you want to change. Those are all the events that I've added to those two conditions. That's all I need to do for those two objects. So I'm going to go back to add some new objects. And to do that, I'm going to go back to the frame editor. I'm going to insert a new object. And it's going to be active because it's going to have some conditions and some events attached to it. Some rules. And I'm going to double click on it. And I'm just going to draw a red ball because this is going to be my ball object. And to help me out, I'm going to in the properties window, I'm going to call it a ball. So just type ball and press enter. Right. Now its movement is going to be different to what the others are. This one is, uh, if I run it, if I don't set a movement, you'll see it doesn't move at all. But I'm going to change the movement to be bouncing ball. Now bouncing ball is a really useful movement that the computer controls. But if I run the game, the ball just disappears. I restart it. I restart it. The ball just disappears. Because we haven't got that condition about it leaving the play area. New condition. Ball. Position. Test position. Click on those four arrows pointing outside. And underneath the ball going to right click and movement this time it's going to bounce not surprisingly because it's a bouncing ball so now we run the level and the ball is there bouncing about just what i want now i'm going to set a condition if the ball collides with player one 
So new condition, click on the ball, collision with another object, and click on player one. And then I'm gonna to choose to destroy player one. So just simply, if the ball hits in to player one, it disappears. Now, that works, but if he hits player two, we haven't got a rule for that. We haven't got a condition or any events. So a new condition, if the ball collision with another object, with player two, okay, then underneath the ball, it's just gonna bounce. And we're gonna get player two to stop. So right click for these ticks, remember. We run the application, that player one's destroyed, but player two is able to bounce that ball about and not be injured, but it does stop the movement of player two. So you can have multiple ticks on the line. You can have multiple events happening for any conditions on the same line. Going back to the frame editor, I'm gonna add another object. This time, it's gonna be our score. So I scroll down, select score, press OK, click to drop it down. And I'm just gonna have a look at its settings in the properties, and that's for player one. I want it for player two. So I select player two, go back into the event editor. Now, on this condition, when the ball collides with player two, I don't want to change the score object, I want to change the score itself which is underneath the joystick with that number two. Right click, score, add to score. Just wanna add one to the score. Okay. If I run the application again, every time I hit that ball, it will bounce, I will stop, and the score will go up by one. You can see sometimes if I bounce into it twice at once, the score goes up much faster. Remember to close your window when you're testing your application. Going back to the frame editor, I'm gonna insert another new object, and this time it's gonna be lives. Okay, click to drop it down, pull it to the right place. Now, it's important with the score and with the lives, they show what player one or player two, whichever player, what their score and lives are, but they are not actually the score and lives. It's in the properties of the application in the runtime options. Right at the bottom, near where we changed the default controls, that's where we can change the default number of lives. So we change it there and click off. You can see it updates the number of lives. Those are just representations of score and lives. They're not actually the score and lives. So. I'm gonna change player one now. I'm gonna delete that event on that condition. Just right click and click on delete to get rid of it. And remember, I'm not changing the hearts. I'm changing player one's number of lives, which is under the joystick with the number one. Right click and subtract from number of lives, one. And I'm also gonna get this ball to bounce. I'm gonna get the player to bounce as well when it hits the ball. So now if I run the application, I'm getting score every time player two hits, but also when player one hits, the lives are depleting. And there we go, drop to zero lives. Can't have negative lives, but nothing happens when my lives are zero. So new condition, it's not under the heart, it's under the joystick, not under there, under here. If you click, the number of lives reach zero. This is a condition that only runs the events once and I just want it to destroy player one. 
So now I can go and I can bump into that ball and get down to zero and that's it, destroyed. The player one object's gone. If I go back to the frame editor, I'll just show you, you can click and pull in from this little bar here as many objects as you want and they will all have the same rules. If player one hits any of those balls, because they're all the same object, has the same conditions. So there we go. And the same for player two. If player two hits any of those, it's gonna get points. Although I'm failing to hit them. There you go, hit them. Going back to the event editor, I'm gonna add another new condition to do with the ball. And if it collides with another object, which is ball. So if any of the balls hit any of the balls, I'm just gonna get them to bounce as they're bouncing balls. So remember, right click for the ticks, movement, bounce. There we go. And if the balls hit each other, they bounce off. So there you go. I went through that at quite a fast pace but once you get used to clicked infusion you'll be able to go much faster than that be able to set up your own games within minutes hopefully you managed to complete the tutorial without getting stuck but here's a few common pitfalls you might end up in on the free version you can only have one application open if you have more than one it locks down so what you have to do is you have to right click on the application you want rid of and just close it. After doing that, all of your options will come back. Another really common thing is when you want to go to your frame editor, you can't. The icons grayed out. That's because you haven't selected your frame. Just left click on the square preview of your frame and then you'll be able to go to your frame editor. It's all too easy to close your property window or to lose it. To get it back, click on View, Toolbars, and then select Properties. You can also try pressing Control and D at the same time on the keyboard. Sometimes it seems that your edits aren't saving. Check that you're not running your application in the background. If you are, you'll see a red circle with yellow lightning on it, right click on it and click close. If you don't right click for a tick and end up double clicking, you can end up in the event list editor. Now to get out of the event list editor, you can either click on the little X in the corner or more simply just click back on the event editor icon. If you can't run your application, check that you haven't got more than one application open, check that it's not running in the background, but also you could be in the event list editor rather than the event editor. All you need to do is close it by clicking on the gray X, the little gray X, or on the event editor icon to get back to the normal event editor. If you've selected mouse control for your player, you won't be able to click close on your application. You'll need to use the keyboard shortcut, which is Alt and F4 at the same time. Hope you don't get too stuck. If you do, try and drop us a line at Impact Gamers.